Hello Rebels, uh, welcome to the live coaching session on the Rebel Tendency from Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies. Um, if you're a Rebel watching this, um, hello, welcome. So I have a real soft spot for Rebels because I think they contribute so much to our society and yet they are definitely the most misunderstood group and a lot of rebels may have struggled in the past with people just not understanding how they're wired, especially if you're a rebel who has uh, obliger or upholder parents. Rebels are also the rarest tendency, the smallest number in the population, and rebels are often the ones that struggle the most with their tendency because it's so rare. So what makes rebels so unique? While um, other tendencies, like for instance the upholders, are able to meet all types of expectations, both inner and outer, rebels struggle to meet any expectations, internal and external. So they struggle to meet any expectation, even if that expectation is coming from themselves. So. And Gretchen Rubin th says that a, a rebel motto could be, it's so hard when I have to, and so easy when I want to. Because there's a sense that when you want to, there are no expectations. So while upholders, the absolute opposite, love living with rules, rebels love to not have to live by any. Now, what I talk about in the session today, uh, some things might really resonate with you as a rebel and other things might not, and that's totally okay. There are many, many variations of the rebel tendency because we're each completely unique and there are many factors that affect how we react and how we respond in different contexts. So, and even some of you rebels might enjoy rebelling against the rebel tendency itself or what I'm about to share. Um, and that's okay, you're free to pick and choose what you like from this session. So let's dive in to the key strategies that rebels can use to help you achieve your goals and keep those habits you've set yourself in 2020. So rebels, you can do anything that you want to do. When something feels like a whim, it feels like a choice, it makes you feel free, you have no problem doing it. But as soon as there is an expectation, then that's when the rebellion kicks in. The challenge with rebel rebellion is that you want to make sure you are not rebelling against your own self-interest. So here's an example. I think, I think I remember this from the book, The Four Tendencies itself. So a rebel might want to be a writer. And so she starts writing, maybe she's some publishing some blogs, and then her friends tell her, oh, you're such a good writer, you should definitely uh, try and publish a book, you should try and sell your articles to magazines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you're gonna go so far. And as soon as there is an expectation, an expectation of potential to be fulfilled, of things that she must do, you know, more than just her writing and wanting to be a writer, she might rebel. In the best case scenario, she might keep writing, but resist following any of those conventional expectations, deliberately avoid selling to magazines, deliberately avoid publishing, deliberately avoid looking for an agent. But worst case scenario, she might be so resistant to the external and also the internal expectation that she has for herself that she might just stop writing altogether. Now maybe if you're a rebel watching this, you've had a similar experience where you've enjoyed doing something and then as soon as an expectation has been put on it, you don't want to do it anymore. So as a rebel, it's really important that you feel like you have flexibility in what you're doing, that you feel free, that you can set your own schedule, and very importantly, design your own environment. Uh, lots of rebels tell me that they love that when every day 
is different and there's no expectation from others about what they have to spend that day doing. Okay, let's dive into rebel strengths. So rebels are really um, at ease in quite challenging and chaotic or high stakes environments because rebels think outside of the box and they have absolutely no problem going outside of the box, going really everywhere. Um, rebels are very, very good at fixing or building or creating things um, and they're very, very good at innovation. Um, rebels are often bewildering to others, but even to themselves, at how easy it is for rebels to do really, really hard things, and yet how hard it can be sometimes for rebels to do really easy things. So rebels thrive in environments where they get to make, take risks, they get to innovate, and they get to do things their own way. It's actually stability that, su that rebels find suffocating. Um, however, and this was something that Ruben, Gretchen Rubin picked up, and she's researched over a million uh, people with the Four Tendencies framework, is that rebels seem to be drawn, attracted to places of high regulation. There's an awful lot of rebels working in the military or working in law, um, working in the clergy. And one insight is perhaps because rebels need rules, in order to break them, they actually are attracted to highly regulated places where they can feel like they're a real rebel. So in order to play to your strengths uh, in the workplace, make sure that you're working somewhere where it's a results-oriented environment, where it's, you know, maybe you're working in sales or it's about what you're delivering, it's about where you can show your zone of genius, it's less about the process you take to arrive at the result. Another strength, of rebels is that when you are on a mission, you can be as efficient and diligent and reliable as you want. So often a rebel can be taken by others at face value as someone who just resists everything, someone who's very difficult. But when a rebel wants to do something, they are unstoppable. So it's really important for you as a rebel to find your cause to not be a rebel without a cause, because that can make, make for a chaotic life, but to find your cause. As a rebel, um, you might often enjoy meeting challenges, such as finishing a project or delivering something by a crazy or ambitious deadline, um, doing a kind of competition to show that you can outperform people in your, in your group or your industry, um, rebels love to defy everyone's expectations, they love to prove everyone wrong. So as a rebel, you should lean into that. You should lean into the fact that you can do things differently and you, you can prove others wrong. Okay, rebel weaknesses. There's something called the rebel freedom paradox, which is that in their commitment to resisting all rules and all schedules and their love of freedom, is actually ending up living on someone else's agenda because you give away all of your agency. So as a rebel, you must make sure not to let freedom come at the cost of someone else actually setting the agenda for you. So don't let your direction in life simply be an opposition to what other people are doing, because if you're not careful, you can spend all your time and energy reacting and rebelling rather than acting and creating and designing your own life. Another weakness of rebels is that you can experience and cause a lot of frustration. Um, rebels without a cause can often frustrate others because it seems that they can't be asked or told to do anything. Um, rebels might not care if they hear things like, people are counting on you, or you said you would do it, um, your parents will be very upset, it's against the rules, no, this is the deadline, or it's really rude. <laughs> In fact, rebels, maybe you're, maybe you're laughing watching this, um, asking or telling rebels to do something often makes them do the exact opposite. So understandably, 
especially people who are upholders or obligers, can be very frustrated um, by rebels. But to be honest, you rebels can also frustrate yourselves because just as you struggle to meet outer expectations, you also struggle to meet your own expectations. And often rebels find they can't even tell themselves what to do. Even if they, they want to do something, it's in their own self-interest, they find themselves rebelling against themselves. Um, so you might find that you struggle with your own resistance or maybe a lack of self-control. Um, another um, a rebel weakness is that you guys tend to get bored very, very quickly. Um, rebels can struggle with the mundane tasks of everyday life, uh, like admin. And for some rebel entrepreneurs and freelancers, the responsibility and the constant expectations of running your own business can be very frustrating and can set off a lot of resistance, even if it's against your own self-interest, like doing your taxes or sending off invoices. So in order to make sure that you don't end up jeopardizing yourself, um, quite a lot of successful entrepreneur rebels are very, very good at delegating or collaborating with other people. For instance, upholders and obligers work very, very well with rebel entrepreneurs because they can be counted on to take care of the kind of logistics, essential details, and sort of general running of things. Okay, so on to the strategies that can help rebels uh, work towards your own goals and habits and trying not to set off your own inner resistance. So unsurprisingly, a lot of the strategies that work for the other tendencies, such as accountability, tracking, scheduling, don't work very well for most rebels. So here are a few things that other rebels have tried and might work for you if you choose. So number one, getting things done while keeping it fun. Um, if you can find a way to still get the things done that you want to without feeling overwhelmed by a sense of rigid plans or schedules or, or commitments, um, that, will really, that might really work for you. Um, because the key to remember is you can do whatever you want if you want to do it. So two things I heard from um, in the book, which were quite genius. Um, one rebel changed the language of their to-do list to a could-do list. And just that small language change um, released them of the expectation and helped them navigate the resistance because the items they had on their could-do list, they could do them when they wanted to do them, when they felt like it, but equally, they had the choice to not do them at all. Another rebel um, took their kind of priorities and tasks, wrote them on individual pieces of paper, folded them up and then put them in a jar. And then whenever they had time, they would take one task from the jar, open it as a surprise. And then the rule they had with the, with the, was that they would just work on that one task and they wouldn't take a new piece of paper until that one was done. So there's an, a, a playful example of how to get things done while keeping it fun, and sort of having that element of surprise and choice and freedom. Um, a key rebel strategy is in being able to commit to habits of, and behaviors because of who you are as a person. So as a rebel, you place high value on freedom, but also high value on being true to yourself. And if you can find a way to embrace a habit or a behavior as part of your identity, that may help you to stick to it. So if you have health habits you're trying to ingrain, is you know, reminding yourself that you know, I am doing X because I respect my body, because I want to feel fit and strong, because I am the type of person who does this, or I am the type of person who doesn't do this. When rebels have a really strong why behind everything they do, that is how you become a rebel with a cause. You know, equally for things like entrepreneurship, when you identify as I am the person who is incredibly successful in business because 
it feels fun and light and easy and I delegate everything that doesn't feel like that. That means I'm doing business my way. You are less likely to trigger and trip up on your own resistance because you identify as the kind of person who does those things. Um, for rebels, having clarity on what you want is key because when you want to do something, then it's easy for you to do it. When you're motivated to do what you want to do, um, this is how you avoid that paradox, that freedom paradox of living on someone else's agenda, right? Um, getting clear on what you want in life and business is a process. And if all your energy is going towards reacting, rebelling all the time, consider that you should try and reduce your exposure to the people and environments who trigger a lot of resistance and rebellion in you. One way to get clarity on what you want and on a big picture level is something I call the rocking chair exercise. And this is where you imagine you are 85 or 90 years old and you're sitting on a rocking chair on your porch and you're reflecting back on your life. You can do this as a journaling exercise. So ask yourself at age 90, what am I the most proud of? What impact have I made on the world? What are my greatest achievements? And how do I want to be remembered? Now this exercise is really powerful for all four tendencies, but particularly for rebels, because for some of you who have a very, very strong resistance or rebellion muscle, you might risk spending your whole life rebelling and reacting just for the sake of it, and you might miss out on the chance to do some of the things that you really want to do. And on a day-to-day -day level, um, it can be really helpful to write down what you want and keep that close by so that if you ever experience an attack of resistance or you're feeling a rebellion coming on, you can quickly have a look and remind yourself of why you are doing this thing in the first place. For instance, you know, you're working with a client and the relationship has become difficult and you just want to sack them and drop everything. It can be useful to come back to why you're working with them, which is that they are paying me really well to learn these new skills that I want to learn on this job. So basically, I am being paid to learn with their money. I am the winner in this situation. I am getting what I want. This is part of my freedom. Or for instance, maybe you want to exercise regularly, but you just don't like the idea of having to commit to booking a class in advance or feeling like you're roped into a schedule where you're not, you're not flexible, is you know, reminding yourself of why you want to go to these classes. I want to feel fit and strong. I want to feel good in my body. Plus, I also want to do hard things that other people can't do to show them that uh, um, who I am, you know. So I'm going to go to those classes and I'm going to book them in advance. Um, as a rebel, you're really, really, really good at doing things your own way. You love to defy expectations, to go against the grain and do things totally differently to how everyone else is doing them. So this is why things like guaranteed blueprint or the one way for success, you know, follow the recipe, best practice, um, can really set off your spirit of resistance. Um, but that doesn't matter because being self-employed, it means that you can do things your own way. You can really lean into what you want to do, what feels right. Um, so you should do so. Let your imagination run free. Don't allow yourself to be hemmed in by other people's way of doing things or other people's expectations. Remember, you are a rebel. Um, you can do really hard things and do them with style. So set yourself challenges, run experiments, and also feel free to change the goalposts, the rules, the process at any time. Um, one Last thing about goals as a rebel, be very, very careful. If, if you're a rebel whose spirit of resistance is easily set off, 
Be mindful of who you share your biggest goals and desires with because if someone praises or encourages or asks you too many questions, you might rebel against the expectation and therefore your own desire. So just to wrap up, um, remember, be a rebel with a cause, not a rebel without a cause. That will make the very big difference in your life. I hope that these have been some helpful tips. Um, thank you very much for watching and I would love to hear from you. What's it like to be a rebel? How have you faced some of these challenges yourself? And what tips or strategies do you have for your fellow rebels about how to thrive in life and business? Thanks very much for watching. Speak soon.